Hi, this is Matt from Audio Plugin Deals. Today we're looking at the awesome new instrument from Sample Logic called Apology X. Let's have a look at it. Apology X is an absolute monster of a library. So there's absolutely no way I can cover it all in this video. However, I will try and cover off as much as possible. I think the best way to do this is because I know you guys like hearing the sounds more than my talking, which I understand. I think the plan will be to bookend the video with some examples. And in the middle, I will go through some of the key features. I think just to ensure I'm not going to double up, I will stick to the first half, so A through to M. And then at the end, I will do N through to Z. So let's play back a few just at random. Obviously, you can select them directly from the list here. <laughs> Straight off the bat, you can hear what it's capable of. Oh, I like that one. Once again, just completely at random. However, if we want to be more specific about it, we can go over to this fantastic tagging menu over here. And let's go electronic, sounds like one we want to try out. Ewok Piano is a must, of course. Humans vs. AI. Wow, that sounds awesome. Let's listen to one of the One Note Glory sounds interesting. Turn off electronic. Let's have a listen to Effectual. They all just sound so good. And a fear of sounding like a broken record. Every new one is my new favorite. Flower Moon.
Let's make a movie is obviously a must. As is Lunar Fish. Let's have one more example then, and then I'll explain the features. Let's go panoramic motion, I think. Let's have a listen. Calling Woody. You can hear there's a bit of a glitch or a stutter in that. That's one of the features I'll explain in a minute. Some awesome panning there. Okay, two more, then we'll move on. And then which one for our final one? Guitars and glitter. Okay, one more, just because I like the name Hippie Grass. Every one of those chosen completely at random just sounds awesome. So let's have a look at the instrument itself. Let's close out of here. Now, if you're familiar with any sample logic product, you're probably familiar with this X, Y axis in the middle, and that's because we have four cores of sound. Into each of these cores, we have a different sound. So on the top right, in core two, we have Blue Man Magic. So if I drag the little node up here to the right, and then we press a key, we are only now hearing Blue Man Man Magic. Similarly, copper pipes, arrow straight, and then beach jogger. Combined, they sound like this. And then behind each of these cores are the source sound. So beach jogger features whistle penny as the source sound. I think it's a good time now to mention just how sizable this library is. If we go over to the Apology page on the Sample Logic website, we can see that there are 900 instruments and presets and 23 gig of content with 549 multi-sampled instruments. So it is, as I said right at the start, it is a absolute monster of a library. Once we have our core sounds that we like, then we can go over to our effects page and then we can choose from a whole host of different effects. So we have choruses, delays, flanges, plates, re reverbs, more delays, more reverbs, and we've got the replica delay from native instruments, so loads of different effects at your disposable that can be assigned to any of the cores. You'll notice when I press a button, we have these little numbers moving around, and that's because we have the step animation in effect, and that is automating to which effect each of the cores is going. So to explain that a little bit better, on the previous page, we have core one on the top left. We have effect one, or effect A on the top left. That doesn't necessarily mean that replica splash is always assigned to copper pipes. These are just four effects laid out in this quadrant. And then we define by these numbers here, by these little balls, to which effect they are going. So for example, replica splash, if I want that to go to all cores simultaneously, I will put it in the middle like so. Similarly, if I want resto verbs to only apply to core two, then I'll put it up like so. And then I might want core four to only go to this one eighth dotted delay down here. But by defining them to one fixed position, that's a bit boring for apology. So instead we use the step animator and they will cycle around this X, Y axis. We can decide that we don't want, let's say, number two to move around. So core two will stay locked on 1 16th today. The reason core three isn't moving around, that's because it has no step animation defined on that page.
but now you can hear just the stereo effect. So that sounds really good. Let's now flick over to the next tab, which is the edit page. And we have here four numbers. They obviously correspond to each of the cores. So on core one, we have the core name and then the source sound, as I mentioned earlier, we have a conventional envelope here for that sound. We can transpose and edit the pitch. Then to the right of that, we have a filter, which as you can see here, various low pass modes, a band pass, notch, a peak, and another notch here. That obviously has its own envelope also. And then in addition to that, we have a dedicated low cut. You might have noticed when I was going through some of the presets that this keyboard, some of the keys were lit up a different color. And that is because we can allocate a core to a certain key range. So for example, this copper pipes is now dedicated to the entire range. So if we were to move this slider, and we'll do that for more than one source sound, you can see that now core three is only playing the lower octave there. So I wanna press the key on that lower octave that is only arrow straight playing. Or if I go higher, then you can hear we have the other three cores playing. So essentially a key split. And then moving on to the last tab here, we have the step animator. And given that the name of the instrument is Apology, it's probably no surprise to learn that this is where the heart of the instrument is. Currently we're looking at all four cores simultaneously, but we can isolate them by clicking on one here. And now hopefully you'll get a feeling of just how extensive the animation options are. So once again, this is just for core one. We currently have 16 steps. This can go all the way to 128. When I was going through the effects, I mentioned the animation for those, and you can see that down here. So for example, on step two for copper pipes, we have this effect going to FXY, or it can go all the way to FXX, and so on and so forth. You'll see some of the more conventional type of features, so whether that step is on or off, the velocity, whether it's transposed, panning, but then in addition, some really cool features. So the rate for the individual step, you have a stutter feature, and the rate for that stutter on each individual step. And then one of my favorites, the probability that that individual step will trigger. So currently it's at 100%, so it will always trigger, or we can put that down at whatever we want. So now there's only a 20% chance that that step will trigger. We can make it go forward, backwards or ping pong four down backwards. We can randomize the steps by pressing this button here. We can also duplicate the number of steps. So we're currently on 16. We can change it should we wish to 32 up there or 128 like I said at the start. Or we can also just click on this button and you can see now the steps are 32. So it has essentially duplicated that. And then if we have been playing with all those options and we're still not feeling it, then we just come up here and press this random button and as you can see, it will randomize all the parameters and you can keep on doing this until you find something that is really working for you. And then moving on to these option section, these three dots to the right, this is another really cool feature. We can add in some random stutter or pan probability, for example, but then we choose the amount that we want to dial in for those. So let's say we want stutter and pan and probability be to be random. Let's go just a little bit, like 7%. This is on all four cores, but we may wish to only have that on core three, for example. So let's go back to the main page now, and we'll hear some more amazing presets. I'm gonna turn off the tagging feature here, and then we'll go down to the ones after N, like I said, or after M, and I'll play through a few of these, once again at random. Some of the one note ones I did earlier. Oh, I love that. You can very much hear the four elements to this sound here. Let's go and isolate them by moving our core mixer to each of the four corners. And then we also had that little, the voice. Not this one, maybe it's in four. There we go. And then what is three? 
Oh, the second voice. And then combined, we have... Or should we wish to emphasize the voices and turn down the rest? We can drop it down to somewhere around here. So you can see just how quick and easy it is and how flexible it is really. I know I'm going through these sequentially, which wasn't the plan, but the preset names are really drawing me in. Alright, so let's go down, we'll skip over the P's, we've done them, Reptilian, and I already see the next one I want to do, Robert Miles. Scraping the shrooms, I think, is a must. All right, let's go f five more. I like that one. I'm down to two more. Let's world wonders. All right, one more. such a great setting library and when combined with the extensive modulation options on the effects and the step sequencer itself i think you'll have a lot of fun with this and so much to be inspired by as well so go check it out i really hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have and i'll be back shortly with something else i'll see you then bye <laughs>